Hello again, everyone. I'm Howard Cosell. We're delighted to be able to bring you this very, very quaint, unique event. And it was September 20th, 1973. More than 50 million Americans tuned in. And here comes Billy Jean King. To watch the battle of the sexes, King versus Riggs. Look at that male chauvinist pig that symbolizes what Bobby Riggs is holding up there, Rosie. Girls play a nice game of tennis for girls. But when they get out there on a court with a man, even a tired old man of 55, they're going to be in big trouble. After weeks of hype and anticipation, King won easily in straight sets. But 40 years later, rumors persist and a question lingers. Did Bobby Riggs throw the match? 99% of me would say that she beat him fair and square. Um, but you know, if you know Bobby Riggs, you can't put anything past him. Riggs displays his usual tight defense. Stories about former Wimbledon champion Bobby Riggs, the gambler and hustler, go back nearly 75 years. Bobby Riggs was a guy with one thing in his mind. It was a score. He had to get the best of somebody. Tennis historian Bud Collins says Riggs fixed a match in the late 1940s. Well, there was one match, a doubles match at Seabright. Bobby and... His partner got way ahead, but they never got the victory. So he purposefully lost the match? I believe he did. Riggs usually bet when he had a distinct edge. As he got older, he staged bizarre matches to make a buck, like playing in drag, volleying around chairs while carrying a tennis bag. Oh! Everything became a hustle from making free throws to tossing cards in a wastebasket with his best friend, Lorne Kuehl. Like that, like that. See, I like to bet. Gonna drill him in there like that. See, I get what, what kind of things did you bet on with Bobby? Anything. We bet on the length of the, uh, the 747 on the way to, to Europe. Don't you duck me now this afternoon. Now. Riggs talked about his gambling obsession on 60 Minutes. All of the running, all of the chasing, all of the betting, all of the playing. What's it all about? Well, do you do it for money, Bobby? No, I do it for fun. The sport is the thing to do. Well, how do you when I can't this? play for big money, I play for little money. And if I can't play for little money, I stay in bed that day. He gambled in Las Vegas, losing $17,000 in one night at Baccarat. And few knew he bet a lot and lost a lot, mostly on football with illegal bookmakers connected to the mafia. He also bet with mob guys on golf and cards. That's the right odds. Six to five, take your pick. By the early 1970s, friends say Riggs was hunting for a new hustle that would put him back in the spotlight. There's a lot of men through the ages that you could admire. I haven't been able to find too many women. That he have... took the most basic conflict in the world, which is man versus woman. Riggs set up an exhibition match with Margaret Court, the number one player in the world. He said, I'm gonna just gonna destroy her. And I said, well, dad, she's pretty good. He said, don't worry, I'm gonna train every day. I'll be ready for her. After practicing 10 to 12 hours a day for months, Riggs annihilated Court. 6261 in May 1973. They called it the Mother's Day Massacre. The victory landed Riggs on the cover of Sports Illustrated with a warning, never bet against this man. Next, Riggs challenged five-time Wimbledon champion, Billie Jean King. Ugh, so my heart starts to pound and my stomach, you know, gets all, my stomach's starting to feel that pressure right away because I knew I was going to say yes, so I knew that it was on. The match was on. Personally, I wish a woman would stay in the home and do the kitchen work and uh, <laughs> take care of the babies and compete in areas where they can compete in. Hey, you chauvinist pig. Give a listen to the ballad of Bobby Riggs. The promotion was Riggs' bombast at its best. Henry VIII. I loved him because this guy really knew how to handle his women. $100,000, TV rights, and diamond collars. And the winner takes it all. Shake my hand. He was constantly promoting. And it is going to be the battle of the sexes. Don't anybody let you tell you it's any different. 
Oh, too wrong, huh? Hawking his book and kissing female fans. In one workout, he sold tickets to watch him hit balls at a poster of Billie Jean King. Instead of training every day, Riggs was partying and hustling. Bobby's practice sessions are really more like money orgies. He took $100 from a shoe manufacturer in this match against one player and 32 chairs. Now you've heard the ballad of Bobby Riggs. Millions of dollars were bet in Vegas and with bookies around the country. Most of it was on Riggs, the heavy favorite. But if you bet on King, you could more than double your money. The following is an exclusive presentation of ABC Sports. What a scene it is, almost reminiscent of college football with the celebrities present, with the big band here, with dancing cheerleaders and all of the rest. Once the match began, it simply looked as if it wasn't Riggs's night. He was very nervous. He was extremely nervous, so was I. But some of his errors were glaring. Bobby doesn't look too happy there. The match started, suddenly the first set's over. The crowd was very much for Billie Jean. There was no question about that. But I think they were stunned at how one-sided it was. Some tennis veterans, including friends of Riggs, thought something wasn't right. Oh. Bobby shakes his head. You rarely will see that from Bobby Riggs. I didn't believe it. I didn't believe that he could put up that kind of stink bomb in front of what the biggest viewing audience for a tennis match ever. Riggs made a slew of unforced errors. Known for his accurate service game, he missed nearly half of his first serves. Oh, that first service has been a disaster for him all night. And double faulted on key points. And the second double serve. Ball. Double and it's been a night, I think, that was not expected by most. It is over. Let's watch Bobby Riggs. Immediately after, if you were a tennis person that knew Bobby Riggs, the first thing that comes to your mind is he threw the match. He took an ice bath after the match. In his, in his room, and he said he was contemplating um, drowning himself, that it was the worst thing in the world he has ever done. This is the worst thing I've ever done. The question is, what exactly had Riggs done? My name is Hal Shaw. I'm 79 years old. I'm about to tell you a story that's been a secret that I've kept for 40 years. Hal Shaw was an assistant golf pro at the Pomacea Golf and Country Club in Tampa, Florida. Nine months before the Riggs-King match, he was in the bag room fixing clubs after midnight. I heard these voices out front, and I thought someone was trying to break in. So I automatically turned off my bench light and secured the door, and I just remained just dead still. Through the bag room door window, Shaw says he saw several men enter the pro shop and sit down for a meeting. The first gentleman was Frank Regano, and the gentleman that was behind Frank was Santo Traficante Jr. And the other gentleman I recognized was Carlos Marcelo. Frank Regano was a lawyer for the mob who was a member at Pomacia. One of his clients was Santo Traficante Jr. of Tampa. The third man was Carlos Marcello of New Orleans. Both men ran networks of illegal bookmakers and were two of the most infamous mob bosses of the 20th century. I was petrified, knowing that at any moment, if I did something, that my life could be uh, in jeopardy standing behind that door. Can you hear them clearly? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm probably 20 feet away. And what do you hear them say? The main thing that, that astonished me was they brought up the name of Bobby Riggs. Bobby had approached Regano about a proposal to set up two matches between the two best women players in the world. He mentioned Margaret Court, and it's easy for me to remember that because one of my aunt's name is Margaret, and, and the second lady was Billie Jean King. And Riggs had assured him that 
he would beat Margaret Court and then he would go in the tank and he'll make it look and appear that he's trying his best, but Billie Jean King is just overwhelming him. Shaw says he heard Regano mention a man in Chicago who would be in on the fix and that Riggs allegedly owed the mob a gambling debt of more than $100,000. The men asked Regano to name Riggs's price. What does Bobby, what does Riggs want out of this? And Regano says he has asked for his debt to be erased. He's also asked for a certain amount of money, which is to be discussed later, to be put in a bank account for him in England. And Regano says, it's going to be, you know, peanuts compared to what we're going to make out of this. I've never heard anything so ridiculous, so far-fetched, and it's just complete bullshit. Lorne Kuehl and Larry Riggs have been friends for nearly 50 years, but disagree about the possibility of a fix. There's no mob people involved with this match. I mean, the mob doesn't even play tennis. Did you know mafia guys? Absolutely. Is it possible these guys were talking some shit? Yes. Is it possible that they talked to him about doing it? Possible. I, I would bet my life that Bobby never had that discussion with him. Now, maybe they had that discussion with themselves, you know, because they're, they're mobsters, but Bobby, that's not Bobby. Well, one of the things that we Bobby learned in our... Bobby doesn't get involved with mobsters. That's not Bobby. Bobby well, keeps it... Actually, Billy, he, he did. Larry Riggs says one of his dad's golf partners was Jackie the Lackey Cerrone, who became a top Chicago mobster. Jackie was a hitman for the mafia, and I actually met him playing golf because I caddied for dad, and I said to dad, she said, this guy steps on your ball whenever you can. And he just smiled and he said, you just don't mess with these guys. You just don't ask any questions, just keep your mouth shut. Several times in the weeks leading up to the match, Larry Riggs says his father met privately with men he recognized as mob associates of Jackie Cerrone. Look like uh, the bad guys in the movies. Gardner Malloy, a former American tennis champion, was a close friend of Riggs. Do you think there's any possibility that Bobby purposefully lost the Battle of the Sexes match? Oh, sure. He'd do anything for a buck. And I think that the mobsters were in on the match with Billie Jean King. I love Gardner. Um, but I'm going to tell you, I know when a player does, wants to win and when they don't want to win. Bobby Riggs wanted to win that match. I saw it in his eyes, I saw it when we changed ends, and there is no question. I have played matches where players have tanked, and I know what it feels like, and I know what it looks like, and he did not. Bobby Riggs! Over the years, when asked about the match, Riggs always credited Billie Jean King. Had to hand it to Billie Jean King. She played a great match. She rose to the occasion, played the best match of her life. And Even at the age of 77, just six months before his death from prostate cancer, Riggs repeated the same story. I'm usually very good in a clutch match and a big money match like that. But this is one time I fail. You got to hand it to Billie Jean King. Hal Shaw says he kept his secret for nearly four decades because he feared retribution from the mob. He'll be 80 later this year and says he wanted to tell his story before he dies. Hal, what do you tell people who will say this is impossible to believe 40 years later? Yeah, I probably would say the same thing. You know, 40 years, you know, and you haven't told a soul. I just know deep in my heart what I heard and I wanted to make sure that I could set the record straight and let the world know that this was not what it seemed to be. The winner of the Battle of the Sexes, Billie Jean King, 6'4", 6'3", 6'3".